This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is yet another slim and light, powerful gaming laptop that doesn't take up its own zip code. This is the Acer Predator Triton 500. Even better yet, it has a completely normal design. No forward shifted keyboard, no trackpad on the right, like an Asus Rogue Zephyrus. Uh, but it does have a few things in common with the MSI GS65 Stealth Thin. Some good, some bad. We're going to look at it now. So the Acer Predator Triton 500, like I said, has a completely normal design. So normal keyboard, and it's a very nice keyboard. 1.7 millimeters of key travel, really nice key return and spring on it. It's a dream to type on. It has an extra row of keys on the right-hand side. Doesn't bother me. It gives them a place to put things like the Predator Sense quick launch key, the power button, and stuff like that. And we have a Microsoft Precision trackpad here. Now that keyboard is RGB zone backlit, not per key, which is the latest rage for 2018 and 2019 gaming laptops. So keep that in mind if you really had your heart set on setting each key color individually instead of in zones. Inside we have the usual Core i7-8750H, 6 core, 45 watt CPU. Soon this will be updated with Intel 9th gen CPUs. Performance wise, there's not a real big leap there, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much, especially if you find a better deal on an 8th gen laptop. You have your choice of NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics, full RTX 2060, or the RTX 2070 Max-Q or the 2080 Max-Q. We have the 2080 Max-Q model. This has a full HD 15.6 inch IPS display with 144 hertz refresh rate. So that's pretty standard again for these higher end gaming laptops too. So yeah, if you're actually playing something like an online multiplayer game like Apex Legends where you might actually be passing over the 100 frame per second threshold, the display can keep up. What's interesting here, we don't see so much, particularly on the thin and light gaming laptops, is the fact that it supports NVIDIA G-Sync and also NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics. So there, in Predator Sense, which is Acer's control center for their gaming laptops, there's actually a little slider switch. So you can switch between dedicated graphics all the time with G-Sync or NVIDIA Optimus when you want to switch back and forth between integrated graphics when you're just doing productivity and dedicated graphics when you're doing your pro apps work like Premiere and that sort of thing. So cool on them that they have it. Uh, it, it does require a reboot, though, when you're switching between those two modes. Probably most people are not going to be switching a lot between those two modes, but hey. The look on this, I like this a lot. It's got, shall we say, mature looks. It's not blingy, blingy gamer. It's not red and orange everywhere. It reminds me a little bit, actually, of the Gigabyte Aero 15 that we reviewed. It, it's got that same understated matte black metal finish on it that, boy, does it love fingerprints, unfortunately. And blue accents, a nice calm friendly blue. And, you know, you can jazz that up a little bit with the keyboard colors if you want. But other than the fact that you've got that Predator logo with that scary looking, whatever kind of mythical bird it is on the lid, I don't even know. You know, you got that going there. But otherwise, it's pretty chill. You could take it to work. You could skin it. You could put your hand over that spot when you're carrying it around if you want to hide the logo and the lid. Does it look as chic as the Razer Blade 15? Uh, Razer Blade 15 Advanced. Uh, both of those have a similar chassis. No, nobody quite beats Razor yet for that unibody black aluminum or mercury white kind of look, but this is several, many hundred dollars less money for an equivalent configuration when you're looking at those higher end RTX 2070 and 28 Max Q kind of models. So, hey, that's okay. It definitely holds its own against the MSI GS65 Stealth Thin for looks and even the Asus Rogue Zephyrus S. The speakers on this, they get pretty loud, so that part's good, the usual down-firing stereo speakers, but they're not particularly bass-heavy. It is a thin, like, 15-inch, and there's not a super lot of clarity there, but you can fiddle with the audio software to try to improve that. You might lose a little of the bass in the process to gain some of that clarity, so they're okay. The build quality on it is good. It's solid. It's stiff, except for the lid. There is some flex in the lid, but that's what you get with these ultra-thin laptops. The, the weight and the aluminum materials mean a bit of flex in the display lid. It weighs 4.63 pounds, which is 2.1 kilograms, and it's pretty darn slim. It's 17.9 millimeters, so it's an easy carry. So for those of you who are looking at this as a pro apps laptop, you're not just going to be playing games on it, and you need something you can take with you when you're doing your Adobe Premiere or your Photoshop or whatever it is that you're doing CAD 3D work. It would be great for that, given the GPU performance here. It can do all that stuff just fine.
So how about heat and noise and surface temperatures? The surface temperatures are actually pretty good on this, and that's because they put the motherboard in upside down like MSI does. So the, the cooling fans and the heat sinks are actually facing upward towards the rear section of the keyboard where you don't really rest your hands a whole lot. So even when gaming, surface temperatures are not burning hot. They're fairly well controlled. Nothing to talk about really there. Uh, the, the CPU core temperatures when you're gaming just on default settings, which is medium performance, medium fans sort of thing. Uh, it, the core temperatures are in the low 90s for playing any AAA title today, like Battlefield 5, we demo for you those kinds of games. So yeah, it, it's typical of Intel 8th generation CPUs and thin and light laptops. Those core temperatures are up there. We see thermal throttling on a couple of cores typically when we're gaming, but overall the performance, both on synthetic benchmarks and in games, is very good. In fact, it edges out the competition a little bit here and there. So they're getting a lot of performance out of a thermally challenged platform in general, and this is true for all the laptop makers in this space. The display on this is a perfectly fine AU Optronics Full HD 144Hz matte non-touch display. We've seen this used in other gaming laptops. Calibration from the factory, it was okay. It was too blue, which a lot of these are. The, the white point is kind of high on it, but it calibrates really well. And even out of the box, other than the whites being a little too blue, it's pretty darn good if you were going to use this for photo editing or something like that. Uh, the brightness is not so impressive, though. They call it a 300 nit display, and we hit about 280 nits, so... Yeah, you're going to want to use this in your man and woman cave and not outdoors in the bright sunshine, for sure. Despite the thin design, we got a lot of ports here. We have, oh, by the way, we have Killer 1550i Wi-Fi, which is actually an Intel card, so that's excellent stuff there. It's gigabit Wi-Fi. And we have Killer E3000 gigabit Ethernet as well. So you got an Ethernet port on board here. You've got an HDMI 2.0 port, a Display Port 1.4, Thunderbolt 3 port, yes, and three USB A3.1 ports, and you got your headphone jack, of course. No SD card slot, alas. Sorry about that. Acer's Predator Sense is the software for all of their Predator gaming laptops, and I like it pretty well. It gives you information on thermals and fan speeds, and you can control the overclocking of the GPU. And this is not overclockable CPU, so it's just for overclocking the GPU, and you could probably eke out about five frames per second more in games by maxing that out. There's also even a display refresh overdrive setting, but you've already got 144 hertz. I don't know really how necessary that is, but overall it's pretty lightweight. It's pretty decent software. So it's sounding like pretty good stuff so far, isn't it? Here's the one drawback. Like the MSI, the motherboard is upside down. So that means when you unscrew the bottom, and we'll show you the internals, no problem to unscrew the bottom, and then you have access to almost nothing. So if you're the kind of person who buys a laptop and they don't, you don't want to be messing with it, or you, you custom order it from somebody like Cuck USA or Exotic PC, and you have them do that for you, you probably don't care. But for those who are more enthusiast out there, the fact that this has two RAM slots with DDR2666 megahertz RAM inside and two M.2 SSD slots, and Acer loves RAID, so it's set up at a RAID 0 with fast NVMe SSDs. Accessing that means also flipping the motherboard, unscrewing the motherboard, and taking out all the cables. We'll show you the internals. This is the sad part of our review. So how about battery life? Obviously, if you care about battery life, you don't want to be running it in NVIDIA dedicated graphics only G-Sync mode. You're going to want to run it in NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics mode so you can use integrated graphics when you're not doing heavy gaming lifting or something like that. Um, in Optimus mode, we sort of run about four and a half to five and a half hours, which is okay. It's not class leading for the amount of power in this machine. Again, we have the RTX 2080 Max-Q model. We have enough 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte SSD. So we've got this thing pretty maxed out. That's decent. It's not amazing. It has an 84 watt hour battery, which is pretty decent size, about the same as actually Razer uses in the Blade 15. It comes with a 180 watt charger. I would have expected a 230 watt for something with an RTX 2080 Max-Q inside, especially given the fact that it lets you overclock it some. That said, I haven't seen big drops in battery levels when gaming with it plugged in either in terms of, you know, and losing a lot of charge while you're gaming. So I guess it works out okay, and it does allow for a very thin, light, and relatively speaking, portable charger for a gaming laptop. Getting inside is pretty easy. You remove the Torx T6 screws. They're all visible around the edges and here and here as well. Nice screws actually finished with a black head so it matches the finish of it, beefy things. And then you use a suction tool or you just calmly pry it off. It's not too, too hard to get it off of the suction tool anyway. And we take it off and this is what the underside looks like. 
And here we have a lot of really very pretty blue heat sinks, but it's downhill from there, folks. We do have three fans, a large one here and the two smaller fans. That's so part of their AeroBlade 3D cooling system. And here's our 84 watt hour battery. There's our socketed Wi-Fi card and our stereo speakers floating right here where they are on most laptops of this size. And where's the rest of the stuff? Where's Waldo, right? So a lot of thermal tape here. So I've peeled that back and you can see that just like an MSI GS65 Stealth Thin, alas, the motherboard is upside down, which means that to get to the, the heat sinks, if you want to repaste the heat sinks, to get to the M.2 SSD slots, of which there are two, and to get to the two RAM slots, you have to remove all the screws that hold the motherboard down, which isn't a whole lot. Carefully disconnect all of your cables, detach the Wi-Fi card from that socket first and yeah you've got some fan cables to be careful of and then you can get to the rest of this stuff for most of us it's pretty discouraging since this is a review loaner from Acer uh, when it gets to that level of tear down I just don't do it so there's that so that's the Acer Predator Triton 500. Again, we have the maxed out model with the ARC TX2080 Max-Q inside. And I like the styling a lot. I like the kind of adult looks going on here. The keyboard is wonderful on this. And the rest of the specs are what you would find on any gaming laptop that competes. But the, the, the attractive thing with the Predator, other than the fact it is sort of attractive, is that the price is pretty friendly. It has the same list price as the com competition from ASUS and MSI, but typically it gets discounted a lot more. So it's like, $350 off on Amazon right now, for example, and it's considerably less expensive than the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, which is the benchmark for thin and light gaming laptops with a price to match. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.